many churches struggle to recruit uh, volunteers to mix sounds. So do you have like any recruitment or some training tips just to help people get, help them get people through the door? Yeah, some of this is is from my early experience as a young team leader and trying to figure out how to grow my team. So I wasn't there every single Sunday and burning out and all this stuff. Um, so part of it's from that. And part of it's from uh, someone a lot of the folks listening might know about, uh, Carl Barnhill over at uh, 1230 Media. Uh, he spends a lot of time on this and, and he, I really like the way he put some of his stuff. So Part of this is an adaptation of my own, but also his kind of philosophy. And one of the big things is to be inviting. Um, I I feel like in tech circles, and I'm guilty of this for sure, uh, it's easy to be kind of this, I I don't know, you kind of almost create your own little niche or your club or this little membership group that is like, if if you don't talk the right language, if you don't know what gain means and you don't know what a high pass filter is and forget parametric EQ and compression and limiting and all this other stuff, you're not part of our club, right? So it's a very exclusive and exclusionary type of atmosphere sometimes if we're not careful. And I, th- I think the big thing to be inviting is to, to really open up and, and understand how we can relate to people that are brand new and create opportunities for them to serve. Uh, ask for help. That's a big thing. I mean, guys like you and I that have been doing this for years, we probably don't feel like we need that much help. In fact, you're probably getting in the way because you're not going to wrap that cable the right way, right? And it's just better if I do it myself. Well, the problem is, is that creates a culture where uh, it's a very closed structure. It's not open. It's not inviting. And there's no space for anybody else to serve in that type of environment. So if we can step away from our ego, uh, be more thoughtful and deliberate about opening up and inviting people in uh, will solve a lot of the recruiting and the volunteer uh, staffing problems that we experience on tech teams. That's a good point. And one that I honestly haven't thought of much, but even I've noticed that most tech people are introverts as well. That's just kind of like a common personality trait. So it's easy to be that this is my club. Don't come into it because I'm afraid of what you might you might disrupt my quiet place, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I I go to church to set up for a sound check early, so I'm the only one there so I can have that quiet space, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, th- I think the, the danger in that is that, yeah, I, and I'm not an outgoing personality. I don't go out and try to recruit people by glad handing and, and saying, hey, brother, how you doing? This and that. It's, um, you know, it's more of a passive thing, but even your demeanor behind the mixing console on Sunday and somebody that comes up and is curious. I mean, kids from the youth group are amazing uh, to be able to work into the sound team and things like that, or, or musicians even um, are, are great to recruit because they understand more of the artistic side of sound. And so you just have to train them a little bit on some of the tech stuff or whatever. They can be great allies, um, even if they play on the worship team two or three Sundays a month and mix sound once every five or six weeks. Um, they can be great sound team members. So I think open up the, the sphere of what you think might be a good sound team member and um, be open to, to you know that, that diversity that you can have. Mixing sound seems complicated, but it doesn't have to be. Get access to our stress-free training to help you create great sound at church by visiting churchsoundmadesimple.com.